lesson is on graphing linear equations. So again, linear means line. There are two methods when graphing. Method one involves using a table. To graph using a table, pick at least three values for x. Usually it's a good idea to pick at least one negative, zero, and a positive number. So at least three numbers, I'm going to go ahead and pick four. Then you're going to take these x values, and if we want to graph the linear equation y equals 2x plus 3, we're going to take these values that we selected and plug them in for x to obtain the y value. So instead of x, I'm replacing the x with the values we selected. Once we have completed our table, we are ready to plot these points. So starting at the origin, we're going to go to the left one and then up one. Then we're going to go back to the origin. We're going to stay there because it's zero for the x. And then we're going to rise, go up three. And then we're going to go to the right one and then up to five. And then over two and up to 7. And then we are going to graph our line. And remember we're going to go across the entire graph because those four are not the only points on this line. There are many other solutions. Okay. Now there were two methods to graph, so graphing, so that was using a table, and now method two, using slope intercept form. So that means we're going to take our equation. You need to make sure that it's in slope-intercept form, so the y has to be by itself, which it is. It's isolated. So these two numbers tell us two very important things. This tells us the y-intercept. This tells us the slope. The number in front of the x is the slope. So if we take our graph that we made from here, this tells us that it crosses at 3 on the y-axis. So we're going to start here. And then our slope, our m, our slope is 2. So then I'm going to label that rise and run. And we could always divide every number by 1, and it doesn't affect it. It's still 2. 2 divided by 1 is still 2. So I'm going to rise up 2 because it's positive and run to the right because the right side are where the positive numbers are. So from the y-intercept we're going to rise 2 and run 1. Rise 2 and run 1. And as you can see we will get the exact same graph that I had made in red from doing it using a table. Now if we want more points on the left side we go the opposite. So instead of rising 2, we would go down 2 and left 1, down 2, left 1, and so on. Let's go ahead and try another one using slope-intercept form. 
So this tells us the y-intercept. Also notice it's in slope-intercept form. The y is by itself. So this positive 3 tells us on the y-axis we're going to start at 3. 1, 2, 3. This number is the slope. And we're going to label it rise over run. If your slope is negative, that means our rise is going to be rise down to. And we're always going to go to the right side because the negative we always put with the top number, that makes this number positive. And on the positive side of the x, that is where all the positive si uh, numbers are on the right side. So starting at the y-intercept, we're going to rise down to and go to the right 3. Rise down 2, to the right 3. Rise down 2, to the right 3. And that is the same thing if we want more solutions on the left side as going the opposite, up 2 and to the left 3. Up 2, left 3. Our next graph, we're going to graph x equals 2. There should be something very noticeably different with this equation. There is no table needed because you will notice the equation does not contain an x and a y. It only has an x. So to graph it, we're going to go to the x-axis and we're going to go to 2. 1, 2. And we're going to make a vertical line. Now, my little trick to remember is that when I look at an X, I see a V for vertical. So I know that it's going to be a vertical line. Now, the mathematical reason why it's a vertical line is because this is saying graph all the value, all the points, all the solutions where X is 2. So all these points right here, this point right there is at 2, 3. This point right here is at 2, negative 1. This point right here is at 2, 1. All the x values are always 2 on this line. That's why it's vertical. Okay. The next graph is y equals negative 3. There should also be something very noticeably different about this equation. This time there's only a y. When there's only a y, no table is needed. We're going to go to the y-axis. And then we're going to go down to negative 3. 1, 2, 3. And this time, this is going to make a horizontal line. Now, my little way to remember it is when I look at a Y upside down, it looks like an H. That helps me remember that this will make a horizontal line. So, we're going to go to negative 3, and it will make a horizontal line. Now, the mathematical reason why it's going to make a horizontal line is this is saying graph such that all the y values, all the solutions, all the points have a y value of negative 3. So, for example, this point right here on that horizontal line is at 2, negative 3. Notice the y value of that point is negative 3. If we go over here, that point is at negative 4, negative 3. Again, notice the y value is negative 3. Every point on this line has a y value of negative 3. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at one last example here. Now, what should strike you as noticeably different with this problem is that 
the Y is not isolated. The Y is not by itself. We know automatically it will not be a vertical or horizontal line because there's a Y and an X. The only time it will be vertical or horizontal are if, like our previous two examples, there's only an X or there's only a Y. This one has a Y and an X, so it will not be vertical, it will not be horizontal. So the first step is we have to take this equation and we need to rewrite it such that the y is all by itself. So I like to highlight so I remember what my goal is. My goal is that I want to get this term by itself, the y term, so that I can get then the y by itself. And so the first step here is we're going to subtract 12. We're going to put a negative 12 on the left side of the equal side. Because 12 minus 12, that's 0. And remember, our goal is to get this all by itself. Whatever we do to one side, we need to do to the other side. Now, we can't add these or subtract them because they are not like terms. So I'm just going to bring them down. So again, my goal was to get this by itself, which it is. Therefore, now that this is isolated, now I divide. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1y. That was our goal, to have 1y by itself. And then we're going to divide each of these terms, this whole side, by negative 4. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 4 can't go into 2, so we're going to simplify it. 2 fourths is the same thing as 1 half. So we're going to simplify those. Bring, over the, bring down the x. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 4 goes into 12 three times. So we have achieved our goal of getting the equation in slope-intercept form. So now we know that it crosses the y, at 3, and that the slope is 1 half. So I'm going to label that rise over run. Since it is positive, we're going to rise up and always to the right. So we're going to start at the y-intercept at 3. And from that point, we're going to rise 1 and run to the right 2. Rise 1, right 2. Rise 1, right 2, and so on. That is the same thing if I want more solutions on the left side as going the opposite. Down 1, left 2, and so on. then it's always good to do a quick little check. The slope was positive, one half, so from the left to the right, the graph went upward.